Hello, YouTube friends. This is Recovering Yankee. And uh, I made a commitment that I would highlight segments of the book that are important. And so, as you can see, the pink and the yellow, I've done as I said. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to do is talk about the juices I made this morning, which I still have somewhere here. I don't have a list of all the, be the benefits of all the vegetables that I put in here this morning. I only have a list of some of the vegetables that I put in this morning, so I thought I would read them to you. Every time, since I'm concerned right now about my liver, having an issue of fatty liver, and kidney issues, because it's all in the top part of my belly, most of my fat is in the top part of my belly, therefore I assume that I have some kidney or liver issues. So every time I read something, one of these fruit juice, one of these vegetable juices that are supposed to treat the liver or the kidneys, I'm going to, you know, like, hey, liver, liver, or something like that. Um, now, this does not, I have to give you a public service announcement since I'm saying something that is in a medical or medicinal manner. I'm not a doctor. I am a uh, private person that is a studier and I look at books and I read and see what the book says. That being said, I cannot give you medical advice for your liver or your kidneys. I can't give you medical advice for uh, how to treat and cu or cure any disease. I can tell you things that are uh, that have been beneficial for some, but I cannot let me just glass the crooked. Hang on a second. I cannot tell you how to treat I cannot tell you how to cure diseases, because if I tell you you can cure a disease with such a vegetable or such and such a fruit, you can sue me if you don't, and the AMA can sue me too, so. Anyway, so this is information that it comes from a doctor. His name is Dr. Walker, so he is a medical doctor. I am not get, making this information up. I'm repeating his information, and he's one of the founders, in the. he's got the uh, he's one of the founders of the juice movement in America. His name is Norman Walker DSC. I don't know what DSC stands for, but it probably means Doctor of Super... Oh, Doctor of Science. Compiled under the direction of and endorsed by R.D. Pope, M.D. So, uh... This is based on a doctorate's information, not on a doctor's information. And then it's corrected and updated and compiled by R.D. Pope, M.D. So the information in here can be verified by the medical profession. That being said, I, again, I'm not giving medical advice. You can take this as a form of education or entertainment. Okay? Okay. Beet juice. I put beets in my juice this morning. This is one of the most valuable juices for helping to build up the red corpuscles of the blood and tone up the blood generally. Taken alone, beet juice in greater quantities than a wine glass at a time may cause a cleansing reaction, which may make one a little dizzy or nauseated. This may be the result of its cleansing effect on the liver. Liver! 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 Okay. It's best to take small quantities of beet juice and then build up to larger quantities, okay? So what I do is I've been making, when I make the beet juice, I make one half of a, of a, a small beet and one third of a bigger beet. And if it's a really big beet, I might only use a quarter, okay? A big beet is about that big. A medium size and then a little smaller, a little smaller. Sometimes you get beets that are this big. Okay, you can use the whole beet if it's that big, but if it's this big, you you gotta you gotta portion it. And usually, I I cover them with uh, saran wrap. By the next day, they're no good. So you're basically gonna get one beet a day, even if you don't use the whole beet. Okay, uh, beets are have been beneficial for 
menstrual disturbances. During menopause, the procedure of using small beats and then like a quarter of a beat, then a third of a beat, then a half a beat, and then eventually three quarters of a beat and then a full beat, that procedure has been, uh, has, according to this, during menopause, such procedure has been found much more permanently helpful than the degenerative effects of the drugs or synthetic hormones. While the actual content of iron in red beets is not very high, the iron that is in red beets, the quality of it, furnishes excellent food for red corpuscles of the blood. The greatest virtue of the chemical elements in the beet is the fact that more than 50% is sodium, while the calcium content is only about 5%. This is a valuable proportion for maintaining the solubility of calcium. Solu solubility is associated with how it dissolves in water. Okay. Now, so clearly the ratio of sodium to calcium for the best solubility is 50% sodium, 5% calcium. Now, before I go on any further, there's two ways to get uh, sodium or calcium or any of these elements that I read into your body. One way is through some sort of pill, or the other way is through a vegetable or a fruit, okay? Now, when it comes, when the, when the potassium or the sodium or the calcium comes from a fruit or a vegetable, it's known as organic. When it comes from a pill or from the ground, it's known as inorganic. And apparently what happens, according to some sciencey people that have done experimentation and, uh, and obeyed these seven steps of the standard scientific method. Apparently what happens is uh, the soil contains the vital micronutrients that I'm reading about here, sodium, calcium, magnesium, potassium, etc. And then when it gets absorbed through the roots of a plant, it mixes with the sunlight along with chlorophyll and it turns those inorganic minerals that I just mentioned and many others into organic minerals that your body can process. According to this book, the inorganic minerals that are in the soil do not get processed by your body and they end up causing problems later on. Arthritis, for instance, or uh, you know, asthma or something like that. Stuff, mucus gets in your lungs. Remember I, we talked about the mucus? Okay, well, your body cannot process the inorganic minerals that are found in the soil unless they come through a plant. So um, if you don't get the ratio of 50% organic sodium to 5% organic calcium, which is available in beets, then what you're doing is you're just throwing, it's like putting, let's call it a wrench in the works, okay? Uh, because the, the the minerals don't become soluble in your blood, and they just stick inside your arteries. They stick and they harden things up. They cause you to have uh, calcification of your bones and everything. Um, okay. Also, inorganic minerals come from cooked foods that are cooked junk foods. Let me be clear about that. Cooked healthier foods don't necessarily give you inorganic minerals. Okay. Uh, this is a valuable portion for maintaining solubility of calcium, particularly when, as a result of eating cooked foods, inorganic calcium has been permitted to accumulate in the system and has formed deposits within the blood vessels, resulting in a toughening of the walls, as is the case of varicose veins and hardening of the arteries, or a thickening of the blood, resulting in high blood pressure and other forms of heart trouble. So what this Dr. It, Dr. Walker, is saying along with Dr. Hope, MD, I'm sorry, Pope, MD, is that when you take in the inorganic calciums and the inorganic sodiums, it causes problems in your body. Uh, I would, and if anyone is a doctor, a real doctor, would like to comment on that, I'd like to hear their comment. 
because I'm sure in a medical book somewhere it says that inorganic minerals cause problems in your body. Just a quick side note, when I was a kid, uh, my stepfather taught me how to take apart a water heater and, uh, you know, fix it. So we took apart the first water heater and the pipes were clogged with this white, uh, chalky white looking stuff that was hard as a rock. And I asked my stepfather what that was and he told me that it's minerals that got cooked into the side of the pipes. Inner, obviously, they're talking about inorganic minerals because water heaters aren't eating. They're not eating plants, so they're not getting the organic minerals. <laughs> so those the pipes that are filled with that white, hard, solid stuff is uh, inorganic minerals being absorbed into the through the water into the pipes, and they harden inside the pipes. So if they harden inside copper pipes or aluminum pipes or whatever kind of pipes are in the water heater, they will also harden in your body. So that's what they're saying here. So I'll read that again. This is a valuable proportion for maintaining the solubility of calcium, particularly when as a result of eating cooked foods, inorganic calcium, it didn't say organic, it said inorganic calcium, has permitted to accumulate in the system and has formed deposits within the blood vessels, resulting in a toughening of the walls, as in the case of varicose veins, and the hardening of the arteries or thickening of the blood resulting in high blood pressure and other forms of heart trouble. So if it's not good enough for a mechanical water heater, it's definitely not good enough for your veins. The 20% potassium content furnishes the general nourishment for all the physiological functions of the body, while the 8% content of chlorine furnishes a splendid organic cleanser of the liver Oh, liver, liver, liver of the kidneys, ah, uh, kidneys, and the gallbladder, also stimulating the activity of the lymph throughout the entire body. When you combine the juices, you get, a, you get more benefits, okay? That's for the beets. That's what I wanted to read to you with the beets. I also put cabbage in the juice this morning. Cabbage juice is very good for your body. It says duoden duodenal ulcers. A duodenal is, has to do with your digestive system, your digestive tract. Duodenal ulcers have responded almost miraculously to the drinking of cabbage juice. The only drawback is the frequent generation of excessive gas. And for you, for you women, it's fluffies. Um, in any case, plain carrot juice has been used with equal success, and most people find it more palatable. Okay, for the um, back to the story here. Uh, cabbage juice has wonderful cleansing and reducing properties, though sometimes it has the tendency to cause distress because of gas forming in the intestines after drinking it. Okay, now listen to this. Why does, why does cabbage form gas in your digestive tract after drinking it? Such gas is the result of waste putrefactive matter present in the intestines being broken up by the cabbage juice. That's why you have gas. And for the women, fluffies. Um, this is a natural condition. It's called sulfuretted hydrogen, a foul smelling gas being the outcome of the cleansing elements in the juice acting on it and dissolving the waste matter. So it's the dissolving of the waste matter that causes the, uh, the foul gas or the foul fluffies for the women. Okay. The most valuable properties in cabbage are the high sulfur and chlorine content and the relatively large percentage of iodine. The combination of sulfur and chlorine causes a cleansing of the mucous membrane of the stomach and the intestinal tract. Um, okay, generally speaking, when your intestines are clogged up, which a lot of people have clogged intestines, 
John Wayne had 40 pounds of undigested uh, red meat in his colon uh, at the time of his death. 40 pounds. I can't tell you what that is in, uh, in um, kilograms because that's communism. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to try to ring through on my call. It's probably a telemarketer. Anyway, um, after they're recommending that you shouldn't take the cabbage juice in the beginning because you want to get your digestive tract cleansed first before you start drinking the cabbage juice to help prevent the foul odors of gas or fluffies for girls. It was found that once the intestines were able to assimilate the cabbage juice, it was invaluable as a cleanser, particularly in the case of excessive adipose weight. Now, uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this juicing is because of, I don't know if you can see it, but you've seen it in my other pictures, some other videos, adipose weight is right here. I got like a basketball of adipose weight, okay? Clearly, uh, we have liver cleansers, kidney issue cleansers, and fat cleansers, okay? And again, going back to what I said earlier, I'm not a doctor, but a doctor and a doctorate wrote this book together and presented this information publicly. Therefore, I can read it. Um, cabbage juice has also been used very effectively to help in the relief of ulcers and constipation. Now, the next one is raw carrot juice. Raw carrot juice is an amazing juice. I've got a lot to read here, so hold on to your hat. Raw carrot juice. Depending on the condition of the individual, raw carrot juice may be taken indefinitely in any reasonable quantities, from one to six or eight pints per day, or more. It has the effect of helping to normalize the entire system. When they say system, they're talking about the whole body, all the systems. That this, is a this body is one body, but it is a unity of systems. Um, it is the richest source of vitamin A, which the body can quickly assimilate and contain also an ample supply of vitamins B, C, D, E, G, K. And let me read that again. The vitamins that are in this of course, they're organic vitamins because they came through the roots mixed with chlorophyll and the sunlight, not from the, just from the, digging up the soil. The vitamins that are in carrot juice are Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Golf, and Kilo. Okay. It also helps to promote, carrot juice also helps to promote the appetite and is an aid in digestion. It is a valuable aid in the improvement and the maintenance of the bone structure of the teeth. Nursing mothers should drink plenty of raw carrot juice properly prepared to enhance the quality of their breast milk. Um, one, I have breasts, but they're fat breasts. They're not milk breasts. These cannot be used for feeding children. It doesn't matter what your pronoun is. These cannot be used for feeding children. But a woman's breasts are specially designed to feed children. They were designed by their creator to make milk for children. Their creator is Yahuwah. Okay. Anyway, uh, nursing mothers should drink plenty, plenty of raw characters properly prepared to enhance the quality of their breast milk. During the last months of pregnancy, raw characters taken in sufficient quantities tends to reduce the possibilities of pure pearl sepsis at childbirth. I don't know what that word means. P-U-E-R, P-E-R-A-L. I don't know what it means, I'm not looking it up. But sepsis is some kind of infection. Okay, so it's some kind of pure perel infection at childbirth. One pint of carrot juice a day has more constructive body value than 25 pounds of inorganic calcium tablets. So what they're saying is there's a lot of calcium in uh, the carrot juice, okay? But you have more calcium in a pint of carrot juice than you do more, I should say you have more usable calcium 
in a pint of characters than you do in a 25 pounds of calcium tablets. So what, he, what he's pointing out is that the inorganic calcium tablets, which you can buy at the supermarket or at uh, the drugstore, are useless for your body. They just harden up your blood and, and, and give you arthritis and other diseases that I mentioned earlier. Uh, and that doesn't do anything. And your body just surrounds it in mucus and eventually puts it in fat and then tries to hide it somewhere in your body. So you'll get more usable calcium from one pint of characters than from 25 pounds of inorganic calcium tablets. Raw carrot juice is a natural solvent cleaner for ulcerous and cancerous conditions. It is, a, it is resistant to infections, doing most efficient work in the conjunction with the adrenal glands. It helps prevent infections of the eyes and throat, as well as the tonsils and sinuses and the respiratory organs, generally speaking. It also protects the nervous system and is unequaled for, its in, for increasing vigor and vitality. Now again, I'm not making this up. This comes from doctorate Dr. Walker and medical doctor R.D. Hope. And they're saying that it's a solvent for ulcerous and cancerous conditions. In other words, it cleans up. Solvent. People, when I used to work on cars when I was younger, when I wore a younger man's clothes, we would put car parts in solvent and it would clean. Usually kerosene was the solvent. Now I'm not saying that carrot juice has kerosene. Please don't get that wrong. I'm just saying it acts the same way as kerosene does on parts of an engine. It cleans off the cleans off the grease, it cleans off the caked on oil, which doesn't isn't even oil anymore. Um, Intestinal and liver diseases are sometimes due to a lack of certain of the elements contained in properly prepared raw characters. When this is the case, then a noticeable cleaning up of the liver may take place, and the material which was clogging the liver will be, dis will be found to dissolve. Now here comes a problem for some people. After you have dissolved a sufficient amount of stuff in your liver that needs to be dissolved, mostly inorganic minerals and the junk food that you've been eating your whole life and the alcohol and the pills and everything else you're putting in your body has gone into your liver and has blocked it and gone into my liver and blocked it. That's why my liver is so fat now. Okay. Uh, apparently because carrot juice is such a good solvent it starts cleaning out all the ducts and all the uh, veins and all the arteries that are inside the liver. All the passageways that are inside the liver. And once those get cleaned out, then I guess it starts working on the outside, cleaning the fat off the outside. Now, um, when that happens, a lot of times your digestive tract is not sufficient to get all that toxic, toxicity out of your body. So your body will now push the toxins through your skin, which causes you to have an orange coloring but don't worry, fear not, worry not. The orange coloring goes away within a couple of weeks. Okay, you're not getting the orange coloring as a result of the carrots. The orangeness of the carrots does not make the orange coloring come out. Just as, logically speaking, when you eat beets, your skin doesn't turn red because the beets are red. Okay, the orange coloring, where does it come from? Okay, the material that comes out of your liver that's the toxic material that's in your liver, pills, potions, lotions, junk food, cigarettes, liquor, and every, every other bad thing you put in your life and that you put into your body, the material has a distinctly orange or yellow pigment. Uh, where, okay. And while it is being so eliminated from the body, will sometimes discolor the skin. Whenever such a discoloration takes place on their drinking characters or their juices, it is an indication that the liver is getting well, and it's getting a well-needed cleansing. Okay? It is not the carrot juice itself, nor the carotene, which is what makes carrots orange. It's not the carotene either that comes through the skin, as this discoloration will take place even if the juice is filtered to the point of clearing all color pigments from it. It is... And again, 
they make logical connections there. If you eat green greens from salad, your skin doesn't turn green. If you eat beets, your skin doesn't turn red. Or if you eat tomatoes, your skin doesn't turn red. So when you eat carrots, your skin doesn't turn orange. However, the toxins that are in your liver, when they get pushed through your skin because your digestive tract can't push them out quickly enough, they turn yellow. And I think some people call that jaundice. Like you get jaundice in your eyes and stuff. So in this case, when you're drinking the carrot juice and it's cleansing out all the ducts and by the highways and byways of your liver, it's forcing it through your skin. And then your skin turns orange for a couple of weeks. Um, but it does go away. Now, instead of becoming distressed over the appearance of the skin discoloration, which will in any case eventually disappear, we should be gratified that the disintegration of the liver has been stopped or prevented by the use of these juices. And uh, since I live in South Carolina, I'm getting a nice tan. What do I care if I have a little bit of orange tint to the tan? But if I'm going to fix my liver, I need to do what I need to do. Okay? Some of you that are also overweight, some of you that are excessively obese, some of you that are morbidly obese, your liver is probably damaged to the point where it's just about ready to fail. Same, same with your kidneys. I would highly recommend that you start doing these juicings that I, make, that I read. Especially when I say it helps the liver and the kidneys. Okay? The endocrine glands, especially the adrenals and the gonads, require food elements found in raw characters. Sterility is sometimes overcome by its use. That doesn't say sterility in males only. It's sterility in males and females. So apparently carrot juice can overcome sterility. The cause of sterility has been traced to the continuous use of foods in which atoms and enzymes were destroyed by cooking or pasteurizing. Dry skin dermatitis and other skin blemishes are due to a deficiency in the body of some of the food elements contained in carrot juice. This is also a factor in eye troubles, as in ophthalmia, conjunctivitis, etc. Okay. So, if properly extracted from fresh, clean, good quality raw carrots, carrot juice is very rich in vital organic alkaline elements, sodium and potassium. It also contains a good supply of calcium, magnesium, and iron, while the vital organic elements phosphorus, sulfur, silicone, and chlorine, not silicone, silicon, and chlorine balance perfectly with the former and their action and a reaction in the human system. If you ever look at how much potassium you need uh, from the recommended daily allowance, it's something like 4,500 grams, which you really can't, you probably have to eat 50, 50 bananas to get that, okay? But you get a lot. You get a lot. A good percentage of that in care in a glass of characters. As an aid to dissolve ulcers and cancer, raw characters has proved itself to be the miracle of the age. However, that it be properly prepared in every vestige of concentrated sugar, starch, and flour of every kind be completely eliminated from the diet. So in other words, what they're saying is if you want to get the best benefit from the carrot juice and by logical implication, all these other juices, you should eliminate all vestige of concentrated sugar, starch, and flour of every kind from the diet. And by starch, they're not referring to potatoes. They're referring to uh, man-made starches. Okay. The best food for the colon is the combination of carrot and spinach juice. Pretty clear. Carrot juice is composed of a combination of elements which nourish the entire system, helping to normalize its weight as well as its chemical balance. It nourishes the optic system glasses, particularly as evidenced by the many young men and women who applied for admission as pilots to the School of the Army and Navy, but were rejected at their first physical examination because of defective eyesight. A few weeks later, after drinking an abundance of raw characters daily, they were examined again 
they were accepted with requisite of perfection of eyesight. Now, when I joined the Navy, I was attempting to become a pilot. And uh, they said, because I have astigmatism in my left eye, left eye, that I was not qualified to be a pilot. Uh, apparently, the goggle, the, the face mask that a uh, pilot wears corrects a certain amount of astigmatism, but my level of astigmatism um, prevented me from becoming, it was, too, it was out of their range of acceptability. Now, that also applied to being a Rio. A Rio is a radar intercept officer. That's the guy who sits in the, the back seat of the plane, and he makes sure that the pilot has all the weapons he needs at the right time and reads the radar and determines who's out there and attacking the, attacking or whatever in the, in the, in the battle. <laughs> and if you, if, you can't know, if you can't think of what I'm saying clearly, remember uh, Maverick... And Top Gun was the pilot, and Goose was the Rio, radar intercept officer. And kind of a digression, maybe I wanted to be a, a pilot or a Rio because of Top Gun. <laughs> okay, carrot juice, as composed, is a, of a combination of elements which nourish the entire system, helping to normalize its weight. I've talked about the fat of the system the weight of the system. It helps to normalize the weight, fat loss of the system, as well as its chemical balance. It nourishes the optic system as evidence, and I just read that. No less effective is the fresh raw juice of, low, of the lowly carrot in helping the treatment of ulcers and cancers, tissues emaciated by those insidious ravages of cell starvation, classified as ulcers and cancers, have been nourished back to a healthier condition by the abundant use of carrot juice as a principal item of nourishment and supplemented only by carefully selected and prepared raw, raw diet. Now to celery juice. Because I put celery in I put a pound of celery in my juice this morning. The greatest value of raw celery lies in the fact that it contains an exceptionally high percentage of vital organic sodium, not inorganic. The soil contains inorganic sodium. The celery contains organic sodium. It is one of the chemical properties of sodium to maintain calcium in solution. Okay, remember we talked about inorganic causes everything to thicken up and harden. Organic keeps it in a, a liquid solution, so it's, it keeps flowing doesn't get stuck in your blood. In the, in the first place, calcium is one of the most basic essential elements in our diet, but it must be consumed organically and through vitally organic atoms. When any calcium containing food is cooked or processed as in any of the above mentioned carbohydrate foods, I didn't read that, but the calcium is automatically converted into inorganic atoms, atoms. As such, they are not soluble in water and they cannot furnish the nourishment which the cells in your body require for regeneration. Okay? The result is that such foods, he's talking about calcium, various micro minerals that I just mentioned, that I've been mentioning. Those micro minerals, if they come through a plant, they maintain a soluble state in your body. In other words, they easily flow through your blood. They don't block it. They don't clog it. But when you um, take in inorganic forms of those through pills, or if you go up to the dirt and dig it up yourself, uh, the result, uh, of course, if you have overcooked the organic, the minerals from the soil, you get the same effect. The result is that such foods literally clog up the system, resulting in conditions as arthritis, diabetes, coronary heart disturbances, varicose veins, hemorrhoids, gall, and kidney stones. Okay? So what they're trying to tell you to do is take your microminerals, instead of taking them through vitamins or pills, or going out in the dirt and digging and eating them, take them through a plant. That's what he's trying to promote eating whole plant food, okay? 
Sodium plays a very important part in the physiological processes of the body. One of the most important being the maintenance of the fluidity, fluidity of the blood in the lymph and preventing them from becoming too thick. The regular table salt is composed of insoluble inorganic elements. Varicose veins, hardening of the arteries, and other ailments have been traced to the excessive use of table salt or sodium. Again, because it's inorganic. So it's the inorganic nature of some of these micro elements that are causing our problems. The organic elements, micro minerals and trace elements, when we get them through a plant, they're organic, our body can use them. Okay. Salt is necessary in this generation and the functions of digestive fluids in the system. Without salt, good digestion is virtually impossible, but such salt must be entirely soluble in water. In other words, it has to be organic and it has to come through a plant in order for it to be good for your body. He's not saying don't eat salt. He's saying eat salt through a plant, such as through beets or through celery or through carrots. He's not saying don't take, don't take calcium. He's saying don't take calcium pills, but he's saying take the calcium that's in celery or carrots or beets, okay? I live in South Carolina, so the next one is important. During hot, dry weather, we have found it most soothing and comforting to drink a tumbleful, tumbler full of fresh raw celery juice during the morning and another one in the afternoon between meals. This has the effect of normalizing your body's temperature. Uh, in other words, you won't be sweating so much. And it gets very, very humid here in the summer. There are times of the day from, say, uh, sixth month or June, according to Rome, through eighth month, where you literally cannot work in the afternoon. You can't mow the lawn at 12 to, say, 4 p.m. because it's, it's outrageously humid and it's hard to breathe. That's how humid it is. So now that I know that a tumbler full of celery juice will relieve that, this summer, when I mow the lawn, or when I do outside work, I will make sure that I drink some of it and see what happens, see if it's true. How else can I know if it's true unless I try it myself? Um, sodium is one of the most important elements in the elimination of carbon dioxide from the system or from the body. Deficiency of vital organic sodium results in bronchial and lung troubles, which are aggravated by the presence of extraneous matter in the lungs, such as tobacco smoke. Again, it's trying to harden up the material that's in your lungs, which makes it hard to breathe, which gives you uh, things like COPD and asthma and et cetera, okay? They're getting hardened. Why are they getting hardened? Because you're taking in inorganic minerals. Stop taking in inorganic minerals. Take them in through plants, whole foods, uncooked, raw vegetables, raw fruits. In the case of nervous afflictions, nervous meaning mental issues, in the case of nervous afflictions resulting from the degeneration of the sheathing of the nerves, the abundant use of carrot and celery juice has helped to restore these to their normal condition and thus alleviate or remove the affliction. Celery is very high in magnesium and iron content, a combination which is invaluable as a food for the blood cells. Many diseases of the nervous and blood system are due chiefly to the inorganic mineral elements and salts taken into the body by means of devitalized foods and sedatives and pills. If there is an, if there is an inadequate supply of sulfur, iron, and calcium in the diet, or even if there is an abundant supply of these, but they're from the devitalized inorganic forms, then asthma, rheumatism, hemorrhoids, and other disturbances may result. So again, I'm going to summarize. You can get organic minerals through the plants if you eat them raw, raw fruit, raw vegetables. Because the or inorganic minerals that are in the soil get absorbed through the roots, they go into the plant, and then the plant has chlorophyll and sunlight. It turns those inorganic minerals into organic minerals, which are good for your body. And then you eat them, or in this case, drink them, okay? 
So uh, I recommend to you that you start listening to the juices that I'm reading about and, and start taking them. Do some of you have rheumatism or asthma or hemorrhoids? Maybe this will work. Maybe this will work for you. I can't tell you it will work because then you could sue me or the AMA could sue me. But I'm saying maybe it'll work based on the principles of the elements in the fruit or the vegetable. Okay. Next. Garlic juice. You saw me put garlic in my, my juice this morning. Garlic is rich in mustard oils and this, in conjunction with the combination of cleansing elements that are composing it, it has a most beneficial effect on the entire system from stimulating the appetite and the secretion of gastric juices to the promotion of peristaltis and diuretic action. Peristaltis is when your digestive tract, it's your digestive tract is a muscle basically and it pushes the food through by squeezing. That's peristaltis. Um, diuretic action is where you get rid of the fluid, excess fluids in your body. When you're fat like us, when you're fat like I am, uh, and you start noticing your ankles are getting fat, that's, you, you use a diuretic ideally to help get rid of that stuff in your ankles. So garlic clearly is a diuretic. Okay, the ethers in garlic, now if you don't know what ether is, it means the gases that are in garlic. They used to call the atmosphere the ether, okay? Now we call it the atmosphere. It should actually be called the atmos, <laughs> not the atmosphere. <laughs> some, some of you know why I said it should not be called a sphere, but I'll leave that alone. The ethers in garlic juice are so potent and so penetrating that they help to dissolve accumulations of mucus in the sinus cavities and the bronchial tubes and in the lungs. They help to exude the poisons from the body through the pores of the skin. To exude something means to pull it out of, okay? So they pull the toxins and the poisons out of our body through the skin. Garlic juice has proved very effective in helping to eliminate intestinal parasites. Though it's little uh, in, uh, small creatures like worms that come into your body through dirt, through food, and through other sources. Raw fish, for instance, will give you parasites. Raw meat will give you parasites. Dogs get parasites because they eat raw meat. Okay, Cats get parasites because they eat raw meat. Even humans get parasites if we eat unclean food. When you go to a restaurant, if the cook didn't wash his hands after he went to the restroom, you could have parasites in your food. Uh, when you pick uh, a carrot out of, the uh, out of the garden or a pepper, parasites will sometimes burrow into those fruits and vegetables, and you can get them that way. Obviously, your body takes in lots of parasites, and a healthy body controls the growth of those parasites and kills off those, those parasites. An unhealthy body cannot do that. Okay, uh, garlic juice has proved very uh, effective in helping to eliminate intestinal parasites. Dysentery can be the most dysentery can be most effectively helped with this juice. An amoebic dysentery responds to it no less than other kinds. Amoebas are one-celled creatures. You learned about them in science, if you remember. Probably in your biology class, you learned about amoebas. Okay. Next element of my juice this morning. Radish juice. I put radishes in my juice. This juice is extracted from the leaves and the roots, but should never be taken alone, as it is too strong in its reaction if taken by itself. In conjunction with carrot juice, though, the combined elements help to restore the tone of the mucous membranes in the body. Nearly one-third of the natural content of radishes is potassium, while the remaining two-thirds, more than one-third, is sodium. The iron and magnesium content are also both high, and it is from these that the healing and soothing qualities of the mucous membranes have been found. Okay, there's, I don't have any other juices that I listed here that I actually ate or made into my juice this morning. 
so I don't know what their benefits are. But I think to summarize what I read to you just in the last 48 minutes, and if you stayed this long, I thank you, I appreciate you for staying this long. Uh, what I've read to you is that you need the microminerals and the micronutrients to, in your body, the vitamins, the minerals, etc., okay? But you should not try to get them through artificial means, such as pills, potions, or lotions. You know, taking calcium pills or magnesium pills or potassium pills. What this Dr. Ritt, doctor, Dr. Walker, and medical doctor, Dr. Pope, have stated is that it's better for you to get it through a plant, such as a fruit or a vegetable. Because when the inorganic mineral that's in the soil naturally gets absorbed in through the plant, it goes into the roots, it comes up into the plant, meets, it meets with the chlorophyll, and it meets with the sunlight, and it all turns organic. Then it becomes very, very healthy for your body. So when you see, uh, I'm not speaking against any specific pill manufacturer or vitamin manufacturer, but when you take the vitamins, unless they're processed through a plant, like dried plant material uh, is what makes the vitamin, you're not getting any benefit out of it. So you're wasting your money. So now I'm not saying all vitamins are wasting your money. I'm saying the vitamins that are not based on whole foods are wasting your money. So I encourage you to look up on your vitamin bar bottle or your vitamin jar. If the micronutrients and the vitamins came from plants, you know, dried plants, freeze dried plants, whatever, or if they came from inorganic materials, such as, you know, someone going out with a shovel and digging it up, separating all the micronutrients out and putting them in a pill bottle, a pill container, okay? So, you need to look it up for yourself as to whether the minerals are organic or inorganic. And just as a side note, you see when you go to the supermarket, they have organic foods. Organic foods are not related to organic minerals in any way, shape, or form except that they're, they're plants, right? If it's, it's, it will, you can go buy a chicken that's organically raised. You can go buy carrots that are organically raised. You can go buy a meat that's organically raised. But that doesn't mean it's a mineral that comes from the soil that through chlorophyll and sunlight turns into an organic mineral, okay? So don't get too confused. One is organic foods that you eat. One is organic minerals, which came from inorganic minerals through the plant, through sunlight, with chlorophyll, and it became organic. So the major theme here is that the you should use juices to clean up the system, and you should stop taking inorganic minerals in the forms of pills, potions, lotions, or vitamins. Do purchase vitamins that come from plant material and you'll get the vitamins you need okay so um anyway i'm sharing this with you as you know i'm fat i'm overweight by at least 100 pounds probably 130 pounds okay according to dr uh, kempner my ideal body weight is about 145 pounds i really can't see that because of the fact that i was as healthy as i could ever be when i got out of the navy and when i was in the navy and I was 165 pounds. So, uh, I'm trying this. Thank you, Dr. Walker. I'm trying your program. I'm mixing it with the rice diet. I'm, it's 4.30. I'm getting ready to go make some rice right now. And I have to, of course, have to finish this juice that I made this morning. And then I have to have some fruits. I haven't had any fruit today yet, except one banana. And here's my banana peel. I'm going to bring it outside, throw in the compost. I Just a, a side note, I just found out recently from my, my good friend that uh, the pulp and stuff from the, all the juices I made, chickens love it. They love it. So I can save some money on bags of food, which are over here. I get this brand called FRM right there. 
I don't know what FRM stands for, but it's it's available at the local f feed store. And FRM did not pay me for this. I, I buy the bags myself. Maybe FRM would like to pay me for it. I don't know. I'll contact them and see if they're interested. Because I'd like to make some money too, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, try this. Try tr Take the time to try this with me. I've already been talking about the Tribest Slow Star. That is a, a really good juicer. And I've been talking about the juices. You see my body weight. I've been hovering between 260 and 270 and 280 for the longest time. And, in some, and when I do the rice type just by itself, it, it's I believe that it's it's causing me to cheat. Now it's not the rice diet's not saying recover in Yankee, go eat some fattening foods. No, what's happening is it's making me starve with 850 calories a day, and uh, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm getting blood sugar issues because I'm not I'm not eating enough food. And then the first thing that happens is I go to the cabinet where my son has some uh, junk food and I start eating it. That's the problem. So by drinking the juice, I'll get all the nutrients I need. I'll flush all the, the hard stuff out of my body, repair my liver, repair my kidneys, repair my organs, fix my blood, etc. Fix my eyesight because I need it. Look at this. Glasses, eyesight. And then what is going to happen is eventually I will change my health follow me and I hope you change your health as well. I'm going to contact Tribest company with respect to the Slow Star juicer and I'm going to ask them if they'll give me some kind of advertising on this channel. It'll allow me to make an income because right now I'm not making an income and uh, it would allow me to uh, It'll, it'll, no, it'll allow you to buy them at a, a discounted price because it'll, you know, you can buy it off the channel. So anyway, just think of that. Just think of that. Uh, I'm not telling you have to, and I'm not expecting you to. I just, it'd be nice if you did. But, uh, so I'll see if Tribest will do that. I'll also see if FRM, because I buy enough of their, their chicken feed. They should, maybe they should say, hey. Recovered Yankee, would you please advertise for us? Uh, anyway, I'm going to stop this video now. I'm going to post it on YouTube as quickly as possible because it's Friday night, the sixth day. Friday night according to Rome. And the Sabbath is getting ready to start. I don't do any business during the Sabbath. And then tomorrow night after the Sabbath is over with, I can start my business again. Uh, business of the week. And uh, worrying over tidal waves and stuff. And wondering about stuff. But for the next 24 hours after Sabbath starts, I can be free of all that guilt and worry and fear and terror. Okay? So anyway, um, please consider what I've said. Thank you very much. Share this with your friends. Hit like and subscribe. Thank you.